my name is Rudy. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and thank you for being here. In today's video, we are covering a natural everyday fox eye trend tutorial. I wore this look in a recent video and I got a lot of good feedback on the look. So I went ahead and asked in a poll if you guys would be interested in learning the fox eye trend without liner in a more everyday friendly look. And I got an overwhelming amount of yeses I would like to know. If you're not in the know on TikTok, I would say that this trend probably started on the talk. Gen Z has a way of becoming obsessed with a specific type of look and running with it, which I think is super sweet and creative. If you wanna know something else that the Gen Zers and TikTok has made me do, I'll link a video up above of me trying out a tooth gym because TikTok made me do it. It's hard to explain, you'll just have to watch. The first time I saw one of these TikTok videos, the girls were doing things that I cannot condone on my channel, like shaving off the ends of their eyebrows or taking their hair and pulling it back so that your face is actually pulled. I knew that they were pulling inspiration from models like Bella Hadid and they had these like really big, beautiful looks in mind, but I feel like we all know that there may be some surgery involved with that. Not to say that these women are not beautiful because they absolutely are and I think that the looks that they achieve with makeup and surgery are stunning. So I totally understand why we are mimicking that look because it is very, very beautiful. That being said, I personally am not willing to shave off my eyebrows to be trendy. So I thought there's gotta be a way for me to achieve this look without going to the extreme and without even wearing eyeliner because honestly, that's just not my vibe. After trial and error, this is the look that I came up with today. We are going to go through every step in the process from how you apply your concealer all the way to your mascara. It is simple, easy to wear every day and you can always add or take away depending on how comfortable you are with liner, or a darker look. We will not be shaving off eyebrows today. We will not be pulling the hair back to create the look. We are just using what is at our disposal and creating a beautiful effect with the face that we already have. If you like learning about beauty, if you like Amazon favorites, if you wanna learn about skincare or how to deal with your oily and acne prone skin, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me out so much. And I just also wanna say thank you so much for a thousand subscribers. I am having so much fun on YouTube and I can't wait to see what's next. So let's go back in time to when I just had my foundation on and we will start from the beginning together. She's just gonna have to be here because my husband is away and y'all know how it is. So we have our foundation on. I really don't think there's any particular way that you need to apply your foundation. And I know that it's very different depending on your skin type and any issues that you're dealing with. So I went over my skin lightly with the Bare Mineral Stick Foundation. I've talked about this in uh, the best makeup for acne and oily prone skin. And this is in the shade Cashew 3.5. So we're gonna go in with concealer next. I'm going to use the Maybelline Fit Me in shade 20 Sand. And I've always thought this was a great dupe for the NARS um, Radiant Under Eye Concealer. We're going to apply the concealer in a specific area on the face instead of applying it under eyes like the big triangle that we're used to seeing in tutorials. So I'm going to apply it in these areas and then we'll talk about why after. So you can already see the shape of the concealer is drawing the eye up instead of drawing it down like the concealer triangle that we're used to seeing. So I'm gonna blend that out so you can see the difference on either side. I don't know if you guys can see a difference, but when I look in the mirror, I can see this side of my face looking a little bit more lifted. Obviously we're doing this as an everyday look, so it's not gonna be as shocking as some of the tutorials you've seen online, but also like, do you really want that look? You know what I mean? Like I want to look more natural, but I still wanna have the effect of the fox eye. So I use a concealer that's a little bit closer to my skin tone instead of using one that's like pure white. And when you're blending, you really want to always pull up with your sponge or your brush to make sure that you're always going in a lifting motion instead of pulling down, okay? We want everything to be pulled up, including concealer, powder, everything. I don't have a ton of blemishes right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip that coverage step, but I am going to go in next with our setting powder, which we're going to use the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose. Also a favorite product, I use this every single day. It's my favorite loose powder. So we're also going to use a beauty blender to apply our powder today. And it's really important that we set the areas that we just covered with concealer in that same motion, that same lifting motion. 
And obviously, you know, powder where you feel like you need to powder based on your skin type. I have oily skin, so I, I do give a little powder to my forehead, my T-zone, my chin, all that. Um, but I first cover my under eyes because I don't want any creasing and I also want to get that lifted shape with the powder and help that coverage, bump up that coverage a little bit. So I'm gonna go in and set the areas that I feel like need a little bit more. Okay, so we are concealed and we have taken our setting powder and put it on the areas of the face that we want to lift as well. So if you wanna bake at this point, you absolutely can. That's just not something that I typically do on the daily and since we're going with an everyday look, I didn't wanna include that. But if you did wanna have a more chiseled jawline, which helps also draw the face up, you can bake this under section here where we had pulled that concealer. I just think that's a little bit easier to just have the concealer trick instead of using powder to bake. Also, I don't like the look of like cakey skin, so I just prefer to skip that step. Okay, so now that we look ghostly, we're gonna go in with some bronzer and you know, I'm not going to contour and I know that some of the more popular tutorials for a fox eye trend may give you you know, a contour section, but that's just not something, like I said, that I do every day. And I do think that you can achieve this look without having to do, you know, the extreme measures that we talked about at the beginning of the video. So I'm actually gonna go in with Revlon Skin Lights. It's a newer bronzer and it's in the color, and it's in the color Sunkissed Beam. So I thought this was so pretty. I just love the sheen of it. I, I haven't seen a ton of people talk about them. Maybe it's cause it was like, it came out at the beginning of quarantine and no one was really buying makeup at the time, but they are super pretty. So when talking about bronzer with the lifted look, we're actually going to be applying all of our face products, so bronzer, blush, and highlighter, higher than we normally would, and we're going to have a lifted look with those products. So not only are we going to apply them a little bit above the cheekbone, but we're gonna drag them higher up towards the temples instead of straight out, which is gonna make the face look bigger. When you pull them up, it's gonna make them look longer. I also think giving a light wash of bronzer underneath your jaw really kind of makes that pop, makes your jawline pop and gives it a little bit of definition without having to contour. And I think that also helps draw the face up a little bit because you have that definition with your jawline. Also, I cannot believe how sunburnt my chest is. Like, holy crap. I understand that may be difficult to ignore. <sighs> For blush, we are going to go in with the Joy Duo in Cheeky Summer. This blush duo is super, super, super pretty. It has more of a like terracotta here and a pinkier blush here. They are shimmery, so I don't wear them that often because I do have oily skin and I have larger pores and acne, so I find that they kind of emphasize that. But in the summer, it's pretty to sort of have a shimmery look, especially if you're doing minimal makeup. So I'm gonna go in with the more terracotta color today as my blush, and I may add like a pop of this on the cheek. Once again, once you load that on your brush, you're gonna go up towards the temple. So we really wanna just pull the eye up. I may have gone a little overboard with the blush on the nose, but it matches my sunburn on my chest, so we're going with it. And I don't know if you noticed, but you could still see some of my um, acne scarring here because as I've mentioned, you know, I don't prefer a higher coverage foundation. I, I actually like a lighter coverage foundation that looks more natural. And I've just gotten to the point with my confidence with my acne that it's a part of my life. It's been a part of my past and I don't really care if it shows, you know? We're here. She's here to stay for a while. Okay, so next up being highlighter, I am going to use the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. Yes, it is very expensive. Yes, it is absolutely worth it. It is so stunning for everyday looks. Highlighter is a super important step when it comes to getting that fox eye look because the places that you apply a lighter color, your eye is going to be drawn to. So it's really important that we apply it very close to our eye here, actually. That's a trick that I learned from Wayne Goss like 10 years ago. I will show you the places that I apply it and then we'll go ahead and blend in and go to the eyes next. To start, we're gonna blend this in and then see if we wanna add more after we've blended. Okay. 
Okay, as you can see, we're looking very glowy. We're looking very natural. The camera isn't really picking it up. This also... She just got my slipper! Didn't I just say in my Amazon video that she loves to eat my slippers? And here we are. She's eating my damn slippers. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in for the eye portion so you can really get a good look at it. Okay, we are zoomed. And I apologize because, you know. Things don't always look as they seem. I also haven't plucked my eyebrows in a while, but you know what? It's quarantine. We'll get over it. We'll, we'll all get over it. So I'm gonna start by applying my Milani eyeshadow primer. We all know it. I just apply the thinnest layer because I think that if you apply more than a thin layer, it ends up getting a little caked up. And I don't know if I've said it enough here, but I don't like having cakey skin. And that includes my eyeballs. You can really see how badly I need to do my eyebrows. Which actually, I just bought a um, eyebrow lamination kit. So future video, if I've already posted it, I will link it up above, but um, I'm really hoping I don't lose all my eyebrows. We're gonna go in with the Lorac Mega Pro 3, and I'm so sorry, it's really dirty. They don't sell this anymore, but it doesn't really matter because you can do this look with any type of eyeshadow and any color. And I'm using the color pomegranate here, and that is the main focus of the look. With a large fluffy brush, we're gonna go in and just set down that primer. And I'm gonna use the color toffee here because I am going to use that in a bit to blend into the crease, so. Okay, so now that that's been set, I'm going to go straight into pomegranate and I'm going to pick my favorite eyeshadow brush of all time. And I actually have two of them. That's how often I use them. And it's from Real Techniques and it is their base shadow brush. I did wanna mention um, to get the shape right, there are a few things you can do. So one, you can apply tape. The goal is to look straight ahead with your eyes fully open and a, you're going to apply the tape from the base of the end of your eye here to the top of your eyebrow. So like I mentioned, we're not shaving off our eyebrows, ladies. We can achieve the look with our own eyebrows. So we're gonna just apply that tape here and you can be super messy with your blending because it's just going to hit that tape. You can use a piece of paper, which I usually don't do that because I'm lazy, but for the sake of this video, I can show you. I'm just gonna use this like sample packet from Charlotte Tilbury. Apply that here, start to apply your shadow with that. Or if you're artistic enough and you have a strong enough hand, you can just do it on your own without having to have a guide. So that's typically what I do, but I'm gonna use this just to show you how it can be used. So I went ahead into pomegranate. I'm gonna tap off some of that excess here and we're just gonna start right in the outer crease here and start to build that color up really kind of sloppily on the eye. So because we're using like one shadow for the whole lid and for the crease, you can really just build that up sloppily and then I'm gonna take this off and use that as a guide to go on my own. I know that looks kind of crazy, but we'll blend and it'll look better. So I literally just take that color and start to blend, 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 all over the eye essentially. Oh, Penny, oh no, she's eating my eyeshadow. So you can see just with some light blending that we've already pulled that shape up towards our eyebrow. And I prefer to have the shape of the eyeshadow go straight across instead of going up by your brow, just because it's really gonna pull, like I said, pull that eye out instead of up. So that's gonna be our first layer of color. And like I said, if you wanna go in with more, you can. I am gonna go in with that toffee shade that we took earlier and just buff that up towards my crease and above near my brow bone just to give it a little bit of a two dimensional look and not just that one color. But I'm going straight across and not up in that rounding shape because I want to pull it directly out and not so that's with a little bit of toffee blended into the crease. It's nothing special, but I just like to have a little bit more dimension. And I know we already applied the highlight to our inner corner and brow bone, but I'm going to take a more defined brush or maybe a pencil brush here. I think this one is from Eco Tools. No, it's actually from BH Cosmetics, it's super old. So we're gonna take a pencil brush here and take a lighter color with a little bit more shimmer. So I'm gonna take this color here called Kava 
and I'm going to put that in the um, inner corner and the brow bone. So I'm gonna show you the brow bone first because you can kind of be a little bit more messy with that. You're gonna wanna take it as in a straight line here instead of following completely under your eyebrow. You really just wanna hit that top portion here in a straight line because once again, we're pulling the eyes up. I just lightly take it towards that brow, just the littlest bit, just to give it a little bit of pull. We're gonna do the same thing with our inner corner, but I might even take a smaller brush than that that's more pointed. This is a brush from the Naked 3 um, that is pointed here, and I'm gonna take that brush, and we're going to outline the eye here. So you see that almond shape that we have. Everyone has this, it's not just me. And we're going to take our highlighter and really carefully shape the outline of the eye there because that is really going to highlight that shape that you know draws the eye up that we already have. So instead of giving it a more rounded effect, we're really going to pay attention to that more sharp look there. This is pretty much the look that I did in that video. I may have pulled a little bit of it underneath the eye, which is something you can do if you wanna add like a little bit more pizzazz to the look. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling foxy. So I'm gonna go do the other eye off camera and then I'll be right back to talk about mascara, lips, and your eyebrows. Okay, so we're zoomed out again, but I want to go over what is, in my opinion, the most important step in doing the fox eye trend, the thing that makes the biggest difference, in my opinion, is the slightest and smallest thing, which is using a cold liner and just outlining the shape of the inner corner. And if you wanna be a little bit fancy, adding a little bit of a wing to the outer corner. So I will show you exactly what I mean. What we're gonna do is literally the smallest, smallest mark. And, and I suggest you use a color that's brown instead of black because it really is gonna look more like a shadow and less like liner. I'm using the color Costa Reach from MAC. So what we're gonna do is literally outline the smallest, faintest bit of our inner corner here. So in my opinion, you can see a huge difference between my two eyes and the shape. Barely put a tiniest bit of brown eyeshadow in the center here just to create that almond shape. Haven't done it on this side. And I think it is a huge difference. So I'm gonna do that to the other side and then we'll talk about winged liner on the outside. And if you wanted to amp it up, you could use, I prefer actually to use an eyeshadow on the outer corner. So if you wanted to add a little bit more depth and create a darker look on the top with outliner. You can use an angled brush and I just go in. So I'm gonna go in with a color that's similar to the eyeliner we just used. So I'm gonna go in here with maple and I'm gonna follow that shape that we've already built with our eyeshadow, just the slightest little bit. And you can take that along the outer corner. I mean, that inner corner trick, it's its perfect. It's like the smallest way to achieve the trend without going overboard. So mascara, another very important step in achieving this look naturally without false eyelashes. I'm using the Voluminous Lash Paradise by L'Oreal, my absolute favorite number one mascara of all time. I use it in blackest black. So when we are going for the fox eye look, as I've said many times, and trying to achieve that look of pull it out, what we're gonna do instead of going up with our lashes, we're gonna actually pull them out. I'll go ahead and do both eyes and then we'll talk about lower lashes. See how I'm pulling that way and not up? That is the goal. So they're gonna look a little wonky, but trust me, when it all comes together, it looks really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eye and then I'll be right back. So for our bottom lashes, you might not be the type of person that does your bottom lashes with mascara. We're actually going to pull them in towards the inner corner here, which sounds weird and it's like, how is that gonna work? But what it does is it makes an effect where it's pulling the eye in each direction. So the outer edge of the eye is pulling up and the inner is pulling in, creating an elongated effect of the eye.
it is just the slightest little thing, but I love the effect and I think it really helps. Draw up your eyes. So I'm just gonna go in and do my brows like I normally would because I'm not shaving off my eyebrow for this look because we all know this, this trend is gonna be out the window next month and then it's gonna be like big circle eyes next. Like, no, don't do it y'all. Do not shave off your eyebrow. I'm on a rant. I'm doing my eyebrows like normal and you should too. Okay, so last step, I'm going to add a super simple lipstick. This is the color I was wearing in that video, and it is, and it is the Revlon New um, Super Lustrous Shine lipsticks, and it's in the color Nude Illuminator. I love these lipsticks. They are so pretty, so shiny, so glossy. So this is our final look today. As you can see, we've got the fox eye effect in the most natural every day that I could come up with. I absolutely love the way it looks and I feel like I'm in trend without being overboard. I'm not using a liner or falsies. It's something I feel like I could wear out and look comfortable and feel comfortable, but also I'm still following the trends. Please let me know down below if you end up trying this look and send me a picture of it. I would absolutely love to see your renditions and the colors that you choose. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.